All right. Hey, All Star listeners, and welcome back to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable, presented by All Star Veterinary Clinic, a podcast (laughs) that answers your veterinary related questions while also having some fun along the way. So if you like this episode of this podcast, Make sure, don't <laughs> read it to make sure I'm reading it word for word. I think it's where we I was doing really well until really you really. looked at the paper saying, is just she freaking don't really memorize this? I think she actually memorized it. Let me just yeah, watch. Yeah, honestly, okay. I'm really impressed. So if you enjoyed today's <laughs> podcast, make sure you leave us a re- review because it helps us with our recommended Pop feeds, up and recommended feeds. things. And we a really nice appreciate review, it. please. So... <laughs> Before we get started, though, we have to, like, what the Sam Hell's going on? We have, like, 30,000 TikTok followers. I know. And we've had a ton of downloads of the podcast. Yeah. It's pretty bomb. I'm thinking it all has to do with the related question of (laughs) what animal has both fur and (laughs) scale? (laughs) So, So, Devin, do you want to fill everyone in before we get started? I did a little research after that podcast, and two animals that can be classified as having fur and scales are the armadillo and the pangolin. They look the same, but armadillos have scales (laughs) with a thin layer of fur on top of the scales, and then pangolins have scales but kind of have like a thin beard. Hmm. So, Pangolin sounds cooler. Yeah, Yeah, I was going to say it. They look a lot alike, though. We're going to need a pop I wouldn't up be able to tell the difference. Picture of yeah. a picture. <laughs> pangolin. Is that how you said it? <laughs> sounds like something from Star Wars. Pangolin. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sounds like a penguin hybrid with something. Like yeah. a, a penguin and a... We were just talking about platy- platy- pie. <laughs> platy- platy- <laughs> 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 They're so weird. They're, so They're cool. very strange. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. It's cool. People like what we have to say. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, thank you for everybody out yeah, there participating you. and contributing. <laughs> I'd like and to thank our listeners. I'd like to thank my mom and dad. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> my sisters. No, I'm just we kidding. did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. You want to introduce who we've got with us today on today's podcast? No, okay. What? No, oh. okay. <laughs> you know, last time I did that, you know I got what I in mean? trouble. <laughs> no, there's like okay. <laughs> on today's podcast, we have myself, co-host and associate veterinarian, Dr. Ashlyn Duckwall. Thank you. Well then, Thank you. <laughs> we have um, my room assistant, who's a bad beep. She's awesome, uh, Devin Fortune. We also have another bad beep uh, <laughs> technician, as in they're great at their jobs. It's Josie. Oh, Devaney, what was your last name? Els. Els. Yeah. Els. I just always hear Jelly <laughs> Devaney. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not Josie. on my Vocera thing, so it's okay. Your <laughs> married name is Els. Yeah. Okay. It's all about the Vocera. In the names mm-hmm. of Sarah. What you hear on the days it yep. works. Mm-hmm. And owner, the lead what? <laughs> oh. veterinarian. <laughs> I thought we were <laughs> co host, head veterinarian of All Star. There you go. And my co host, Dr. Emily King. Bad bleep. All right. High five to everybody. Great. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Thank Welcome you. aboard. Okay. Feel free to ask how they're doing. How are you guys doing? Great. Mm-hmm. How was everyone's mm-hmm. weekend? It was nice. You it was saw fantastic. family. Um, I ended up actually just having a chill weekend. Oh, uh-huh. fun. Really nice. yeah. Did your hubby still go? Wait, he went somewhere. He went um, to his fantasy football draft. Oh, it's right. every year, same Saturday. It's a, th- mm-hmm. it's a thing. Mm-hmm. And I've just learned he just gotta have, he's got to go have his boy time. He has you had his girl besties. time with the dogs. <laughs> I took a lot of naps. It was great. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What'd you do? Uh, I was in Tennessee oh, at the lake. Oh, what a shocker. Yep. And it was good. Yeah. Harrison was there. Madeline was there. Nice. Ooh, Stucky's Farm has a sunflower festival. Mm-hmm. I went to that this weekend. It's only like five dollars. Was that cool? Right? Uh no, it was like fifteen. Oh. Mm. It was really Inflation. cool. Inflation. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a bucket because it lets you get like basically half a dozen sunflowers you can fresh pick. And we did we never been there before. Who'd you so, go with? Charles. Oh, we went on Oh, Sunday. he came back? Yeah. Okay. So we walked in and we saw just sunflowers. So we just started picking them. And then we get to the, <laughs> the guy and he's like, everything behind the blue line, you're allowed to pick. Everything above that is for pictures. And we're like, as we're walking, <laughs> like three or four sunflowers already. We're like, thanks, man. Thanks, man. We're good. So sorry. So sorry. There's a hole in the picture line yeah. up there. So go behind the blue line if you go to the sunflower <laughs> festival. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, uh, you know, Josie, sunflowers you are do? super easy to grow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just have them like sporadically throughout our gravel. Oh, that's nice. I, I planted them a th- few years ago and the seeds like drifted. Nice. Yeah. And there's different colors mm-hmm. and types. And yeah. Cool. 
It's beautiful. I need to start a Stuckey's farm in my house. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you have that acreage. <laughs> <laughs> Josie, what'd you do? Um, I went to a concert. Ooh, Pitbull. what concert? Uh, Mr. Worldwide. Yes. <laughs> oh God. It was that was really interesting. There were a lot you of went to Pitbull. <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. He's it was catchy night. music. I mean, you everyone knows at least one of his songs. Yeah. There was an old person in a wheelchair next to me, and there was a twelve year old next to me. So I was like, wow, everyone's here. <laughs> Everyone is represented. <laughs> oh wow. Yes. Okay. To our bald cat. No, but a lot of people did, mm-hmm. and I was upset that I didn't think about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. That sounds actually fun. Like mm-hmm. going to those random concerts. Yeah, the tickets were actually really cheap too. It was nice. like twenty bucks a person. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh wow. Yeah, I good, old to... bowl. <laughs> yeah. good old Pitbull. Good old Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> I think I know like one of his songs. I probably know more, but you do. Fireball. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's two. <laughs> okay, is he? Does he sing the song? What the the country girl? Where are the country girls at? Like mm-hmm. where are them girls? Is he? At? Is he in that with Trace Adkins and? Luke Bryan and I can't imagine. I don't, I don't think, think he's ever done a country. It's not club. Eminem. I don't think. <laughs> I don't see him doing a There's three song. of them that <laughs> sing it, and they're like, "Where are the country girls at?" <laughs> Harrison, can you sort of check you that? that song for me right now? <laughs> Find that song and tell me who it is. I swear it's Pitbull. It's not Eminem because originally I thought it was Eminem, but then they. So each of them sing a verse. Wait, Wait really? It is. Oh my God. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Wow, that what's it, what's it called? Concert. Where are the country girls at? That's what it's called. <laughs> wow. where the country it's, called where the it's a very good song. Well, it's well, a fun shoot. song. We're it's the next dance party song. Yeah, yeah, we need to close that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> wow, and I've got a play. We will in my never head. doubt Wait, you again. I'm not a true fan. I'm, so I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, it's a good. It's he didn't a good play song. at the concert. He did not bypass that one. Nope. Well, he would need Trace Adkins and Luke Bryant with him. That would be a that would be a whoa. Yeah, exactly. All over the place. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Let's get on to would you rather questions. Mm-hmm. Talk about would you rather take Yoda, talk <laughs> like Yoda, or breathe like Darth Vader for the rest of your life? <laughs> I think that's hilarious. <laughs> um, I was going to try to talk like Yoda, but I don't think I can. Try. I I you... is smart. <laughs> no, I smart say. is what I am. Smart, or smart, is, smart I am. is I or smart is whatever. So yeah, what else would you say? It's uh, too hard. I would breathe like Darth Vader. <sighs> yeah, that's way easier. It takes a lot of thinking to talk like Yoda. <laughs> yeah. He's too wise for me. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to do it in my head right now. I was going right to say talk like, like Yoda. Yoda. You have to use the accent too. Speak <laughs> like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's probably <laughs> natural to him though. The accent? Well, he's an alien. So. I don't know. <laughs> okay, he's not officially an alien, I don't think. No, that is not how he is. He's a Jedi. Right? He's now. a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Star Wars people are going to be mad in the comments. Yep, they are. They're going to be crazy. I would just okay. get, I would I just get claustrophobic Vader. in a mask. Oh, you don't have to Ooh. look like him. You just have to breathe like well, him. Well, I okay, <laughs> come for me, but I am super uneducated on Star Wars, so I had to look up, like... Videos of Yoda talking and <laughs> oh it's my research. God. I'm sorry. Yes, we need marathon. It looks <laughs> like we're gonna have to watch some movies. No, yeah. it said that Darth Vader's like mask was his life support system. Like he had to have it on to breathe. Yes, mm-hmm. Devin. He so did. I'd have to have a mask. <laughs> That's why on he to never breathe. took it off in any of the movies. Until he just did it for fun. Nothing happened. The end. Uh, <laughs> and you see, yes. Go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, I'm done. You're Plot done. Twist, he can breathe normally. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh oh, end of conversation <laughs> okay so Devin's undecided <laughs> no I'm with oh Yoda Yoda, Yoda. Oh, Yoda. she's a Yoda Yoda okay. Yoda person okay yeah Josie yeah. baby Yoda baby, baby Yoda's Yoda. so cute mm-hmm. yeah what's I his just, name it's um sounds less annoying starts the G Gr- Gor- Gorgo Grogu Grogu <laughs> he's really cute he's holding he's up the so sign cute. behind all the lights Grogu <laughs> <laughs> He's like the guy with the cardboard. (laughs) Clap. (laughs) Clap now, yeah. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Okay. Number two. Yeah, number two. you didn't pick. Did you pick? I would say Yoda. Okay. No, you said Vader. No one wants to join the dark side. (laughs) No one wants to join the dark side. I'll rule it by myself. Okay. (laughs) Would you rather have 100 duck-sized elephants (laughs) or a one-elephant-sized duck? (laughs) 
Oh no, I totally want to see all those little elephants. I know. You have yeah. a herd, a herd of elephants. Uh-huh. A herd of elephants coming up. Can you imagine they have babies? <laughs> That's a big herd. They'd be so small. <laughs> yep. And they'd just With be stomping around. <laughs> yeah. That would be so cute. That would also, be so cute. Also, ducks poop terribly. I was thinking they're about the poop so too. dirty. Oh, yeah. that'd be big. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> just walking and splat. It'd be like a yes. rainstorm. Of it's poop. Not solid. It's not completely liquid. It's mm, <laughs> it's disgusting. Mm. No Are we all in agreement on a bunch of small elephants? <laughs> totally <laughs> small so elephants. Cute. I feel like it's like Jumanji or something. Like, I don't oh, know. Like yeah. all these like, yeah. well, ducks are bigger like this big. This big. Depends on like the size, the size of that, that squishmallow. Okay. Well, yeah. Mine's because like uh, pounds. Wanda Lyons has ducks that one of her ducks' names is Phyllis. And it's like this big. <laughs> and it stays in the, in the pen with the cats. That's cute. I used to have little... Ducklings. They all get along. Like I get them from TSC no, yeah. every spring. Yeah, they're so that's fun. bizarre. And they Mine, fly there's two of them in there. And, now. Or they and they ducks, the cats don't try to kill the ducks. <laughs> yeah. Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> My ducks love our bunny rabbit. They go up and visit him every day. So Aww. Cute. that is. Oh, really yeah, cool. did you just get a bunny? Yeah. Oh, what yeah. color? Ragnar. He's black and white. Is that, is that his name? Ragnar. Oh, yeah. I thought that was like his color. And I'm like, Ragnar. <laughs> no, it's a Viking name. Also, I was gonna say, what do you watch on TV? Like crime, crime TV shows, Ooh. or like, yeah, crime. I watched The Hundred for a while. It's like oh, sci-fi. Yeah. Have I you watched heard? That. Yeah. It is so good. Yeah. I rewatched it like four times. That's my that's my gig. Yeah. Sci-fi. Don't okay. say that Star Wars is sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> like apocalyptic <laughs> sci-fi. Apocalyptic that makes sense. Yeah. Like space. Sci-fi. Oh, yeah. Surprise. Um, there's a show on. Amazon called For All Mankind, and it's all about NASA and space. Ooh, I like it. Like a true story? No, it's fake history. Okay. But <laughs> fake history. Yeah. That's entertaining. What's if it you called? say it enough, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, For All Mankind. For All Mankind. Yep. It's Sponsored. Because I just finished my show, so I'm searching. Can you watch the, um, uh, the Will Rogers one? The <sighs> I really just watched Netflix. The Boy in Space that has the robot. E.T.? I was just <laughs> going to say E.T. E. is not a robot either. No. He's... No. Okay. Oh, Harrison's looking Wally. it up again. <laughs> no. Why can't I think of it? You know, Walter, it's, it's, my it's, cat? it's the old yeah. show. He was originally Wally. Lost in Space. That's it. You would like Lost oh, in Space. Oh, uh, yes. It's a TV show, right? Yes. Well, I, I mean, started back it. in the day, it was a TV show, but now it's just on Netflix. It's I started like a, it. Mm. Yeah. Not impressed. Oh, I liked it. <laughs> I, it was I mean, I liked like the first episode, but then it got weird. Because the robot? That I didn't get that far. Is I got. Robot. I watched like one episode. I liked the female commander, or whatever they're called. Yeah. But then when she had to like, I don't know if she ever ended up going back home or, but she got the call that. Her Spoiler daughter. alert! Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, this is all from the stop this listening is from the first now. episode. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, maybe okay. I'll restart it. All right, Chow Chow or Dalmatian. 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 It's my dream dog. Okay, Dalmatian. Why are these two up against one I don't another? know. I'm saying yeah, neither. Sure. That's my vote. I mean, neither is the obvious answer, but if we have yes. to choose, let's go I with one Dalmatians. that looks nicer. Get insurance for your eight stones if you can tell me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I won't get one, but I would love Do you know that. how long it's been since I've seen a chow chow? I, like a pure chow yeah. chow? Yeah, I agree. I think like there's a reason for that. Forever. Yeah. yeah. Like forever, forever. So, my good friend from vet school has a Dalmatian. He's so well behaved oh, and good. he's such a good boy. It made me want a Dalmatian. Mm-hmm. Did she train him super well? Um, he was just like naturally oh, like good. good, even tempered and stuff. But he, she did some training. Mm-hmm. But so I don't know if I necessarily believe that Dalmatians are mean. I know that's a Noted. big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, like any dog aggressive. can be mean. Yep. Mm-hmm. You gotta just evaluate mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Anyway, it's an individual. Yep. I knew some nice chows. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's true. They have that. Stigma Back in the too. day, yeah, they do. They de- they definitely have that stigma. Is that why we're comparing them? They both just have like aggressive stigmas. Mm. Yeah, Should there are a few more in there. Mm. Start a fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we go down this road. Yeah. All the breeds are comparing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh right. gosh. <laughs> okay, case collections. Ooh. Ooh. Our yeah. listeners love this part. Okay, so before we get started, why don't we update? Do an update yes. on. Uh, some of the things that we've talked about previously. Yes. Do you want me to go? Or do you want to go? 
I'll go for No, you go first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so mine, I'm giving an update on my jerky treat toxicosis mm-hmm. dog. And we just reached out last week just to make sure she was doing okay. And the owner said that she had been doing well, but then unfortunately took a couple steps back and they had added in, um, she's seeing an internist actually. So they had to add in other like amino acids and, um, like minerals and stuff like that because her kidneys were not filtering the appropriate things. So she was due to actually have another recheck with the internist late last week. I have not had an update about that, but some improvement, not out of the woods yet, unfortunately. So to be continued. So still in process. In the process. Which mm-hmm. of I mean, recovering. We knew because it can take multiple weeks for a hit mm-hmm. like that to recover or the kidneys to recover from something like that. I wonder that, why so. the other dog didn't. I mean, I know that this dog had more of the treat than the other dog, but they also fed the other dog the treat too, you know? Yeah, it's it's weird, mm-hmm. you know? And But she did say they got into the jerky like bag Mm -hmm. so it's like okay was it maybe just the one dog and the other one because like if not every dog that has a jerky treats break out with this issue so it's very interesting true but we also did a tiktok of more information because there was a lot of questions so yeah look at the yeah so look at the tiktok because that's also a good yeah filler of gaps yeah it's very interesting (laughs) filler okay your turn okay (laughs) So, um, my dog that I talked about last week, which is the German Shepherd, the three-year-old male neuter German Shepherd that had, um, plasmoma of his eyes. We did start him on both Optimune and continued his Neopolydex. And then they sent me a picture the end of last week of his eyes and they look normal now. So he's in remission. I've got it. No, they haven't sent me a picture of him in goggles yet. I've got (laughs) to get a picture of him in goggles and then I'll post that once I... Once I put his, once they put put his UV goggles on, then I'll take a picture. Did they get some though? I think so because I mean they, she knows that that's a predisposing factor, uh-huh. so I think they're going to try to use those when appropriate. That's Good. awesome. But he's in remission, so now we'll just maintain him on the cyclosporin, and unfortunately, it's probably for life. Yeah, at least it's so, topical. It's not like a systemic thing, you know. We yeah. have to watch the organs. So. Exactly. I actually thought about that dog last night because my dog, Frank, he's getting to be a grumpy old man. And when we're sleeping in the middle of the night, the cats have to walk by him to go to their litter box and mm-hmm. stuff. He's starting to growl at them when they walk near him. Growling. Really? He's growling at them. Yeah. And so I thought, I was like, <laughs> Charles said, we need to get a blindfold for him. And I thought of those goggles. goggles. I'm like, I just need to put goggles on him at <laughs> night where he can't see like anything. Like a sleeping like, mask? Like, yeah. <laughs> sleeping mask. There what you we go. do instead is he goes on my side of the bed and I literally make a pillow wall so oh then he gosh. can't see, see anybody. Like in the middle of the night? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. my gosh. And now I have to put stuff behind the pillows because he's starting to knock them down. It's just it's an Frank. <sighs> Come on. Naughty man. How old is he? Eight. Oh. Not that old. Oh, his birthday is. Come on, is Friday. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we gotta bring him in. Oh, he's gonna be a party. Does he like it here? I know. (laughs) No, I was gonna say we could throw him a party. How many dogs that like it here? Yeah, I know. (laughs) There are a few. Casper doesn't mind. Casper 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 likes it here. Casper Casper likes it here. (laughs) He likes the set. Okay. Okay, I'll go. Yes, please. So we had a puppy come in. She was about nine weeks old. It wasn't. It was a Faust patient. Okay. So not ours um and she presented for lethargy stumbling balance trouble you might be familiar with this case um it was this week but in the room she was practically falling asleep and then when we brought her out of the room she was kind of like prancing um and definitely stumbling and loopy so we did some blood work we did a cbc and a chemelect and it looked okay um it was pretty consistent with puppy levels so we were kind of between a neurological disorder or marijuana consumption. And so after a conversation with the owners, we kind of ruled out the marijuana consumption at that time. So we just gave her some sub-Q fluids and sent her home and said we'd check back in in 24 hours. If she improved, great. If she didn't, we'd run more lab work. So we sent her home. And then a couple of hours later, another puppy, about nine weeks old, it was her sister, housemate um, presented the same except she was also dribbling urine uh-huh. which is a huge <laughs> indicator of marijuana <laughs> consumption um, so we did the same blood work looked okay um, and then kind of had a more thorough discussion with the owners saying that it could have been outside in the garden whatever didn't have to be in the house um, 
And that's kind of when we pinpointed on an instant that morning where both puppies were nibbling around on the ground outside. And then this obviously happened a few hours later. So we kind of focused on marijuana consumption at that point and gave her sub-Q fluids as well. And then when we checked back in the next day, both puppies were back to normal, happy, healthy puppies. <laughs> That's so good. great. Yeah. Yeah. Had to sleep it off. Yeah. <laughs> what is one of the, and we don't want to answer right away because one of the things that we found with the podcast or the TikTok or when he posts podcasts on the TikTok, whatever, that people like to guess as to what the problems are. Mm -hmm. So- what is one of the main clinical signs that dogs present with when they've ingested marijuana? What are, yeah, we'll say one, but then we can list the other ones. Like, take, take like time. Three, two, <laughs> one. Duck Urine dribbling. Urine Or peeing on That's themselves. Right. <laughs> What's another one, Devin? Loopiness. Loopiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Josie, you have another one? <laughs> Um, tremors and yeah. like, what's the word I'm looking for? Falling, falling, light sensitivity. I think something? they're also light Wait. sensitive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So or noise, noise and light sensitive. Yep. So we kind of put them in a dark room. <laughs> <laughs> Let them right night. night. They they usually <laughs> sleep it blanket. off. Yeah. I mean, rarely so. does it. I mean, that's the nice thing is that you know we don't really have to do a lot of emergent medical mm -hmm. intervention, which is nice. I mean, the I mean, if they got into a lot, then you worry yeah. about their temperature or their blood pressure all that stuff but yeah i've never had that knock on wood have you no nope. to that extent it, they've always we've always been able to just let them you know what's it harder the treatment's super easy it's so Getting hard it out of yes narrowing it down out of the owners mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. like we don't care just yeah. tell us We're just for your dog. oh yeah i've had people <laughs> like be like no it's not and i'm like okay it's not but i'm just telling you like in 24 hours your dog will be fine <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. i like had it's this not, but old it is. couple come in and they were like no oh. <laughs> they're proper <laughs> yeah. proper senior citizens yeah <laughs> and they're like nope we don't know where that would have and i was like okay well this is probably what it is i don't know what happened but it'll be better in 24 hours <laughs> the dog yeah. is better in 24 hours yeah we so, don't care yeah. no we really don't just nope just say it we need to know no judgment an issue. i think the funniest one i ever had was when so i'm going through it and this was maybe a couple of years at three year four years ago when it was not quite as you know, people weren't yeah. like as yeah. okay with it, you know, kind of a thing. Oh. And the edibles weren't really out, a, oh, you yeah. know, a ton and, or a, people didn't have as excellent, but the two, the couple sat in the room and they were like, they, so I'm bringing this up cause this is a likely cause. And, um, they look at each other and they go, oh. I thought you shut her door. And he goes, <laughs> no, you said you were going to shut her door. And I was like, all right, there it is. I got, yeah, I got my answer. So yep. it was just so funny because they were both mad at each other. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. That's all I okay. needed. It's an interesting so conversation. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. Cool case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think really relevant, especially nowadays mm -hmm. with, and depending on what state you're living in. Yep. Mm -hmm. for, sure. for sure. So. Okay. Josie, you want to talk about your case? Yes. Okay. So this case was like maybe two months ago. So some of the details are starting to get a little fuzzy in my brain, but it was a dog presented. It was a little schnauzer. I don't remember if he presented and we already knew he had bladder stones or if he was presenting with just urinary symptoms and we popped the ultrasound probe on and we're immediately like, oh, bladder stones. Um, but I remember they were really like gritty little like sandy looking ones. There was nothing very big and he wasn't obstructed at the time, I don't believe. And so typically we either like manage with medication and food or we surgically go in and remove stones. And this was the first time we had done this. And I can't remember how to say this procedure for the life of me, but it was basically <laughs> flushing the stones out of his bladder with a UCAF. What's it called? Should we make him guess? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three. Dun, two. Oh, yeah. We need like a Jeopardy. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Perfect. Are you gonna say it? Oh, you neurohydropulsion. Yes, that, neurohydropulsion. Yep. That's mm -hmm. the word I can't remember. Yeah, whatever. We don't do it enough. We always want to laugh. I always want to laugh because I always want to call it propulsion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. neurohydropropulsion. That's not it. It's propulsion. And maybe we do it more, and I just haven't had a patient that we've done it with. But um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It was. It was interesting. We it's not necessarily a bad anesthetized thing, really. him and. um expressed his bladder and his bladder was super full for a dog that I'm pretty sure was not blocked. Um, and then we 
once the UCAT was in, we injected a bunch of saline basically into his bladder and blew it up like a balloon. And then I had to pick him up so that all the stones would fall with gravity to the very bottom of his bladder. And I had to hold him like he was standing upright like a person. And we were able to just like flush and all the stones came out and we could see them. They looked like little black pieces of sand. And then he was good to go. And he's been doing good. We haven't had any follow-ups or additional urinary problems with him my arms were so tired because <laughs> yeah. we did it like f- four times maybe uh, like fl- filled his bladder flushed it out filled it and the whole time and you flush it by expressing right yes yeah, yeah they okay. put the urinary catheter in and then yeah just expressed his bladder to flush it all back out and the stones were small enough they just traveled right through and made That's it nice. out you said it was a mini schnauzer Yes. Did I say so that right? Schnauzer? Schnauzer? <laughs> yeah. Schnauzer. <laughs> yeah. Schnauzer. So yeah. he was only like a, a yeah. 25, 30 yeah. pound dog, but, but after like 15 minutes mm. of holding him up, oh, right, yeah. I was yeah. like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Nice. Yeah. Saves the surgery. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Absolutely. That's awesome. They have to be a certain size, right? They have to be like no bigger than stones. Oh, yeah. Like I bet to make it through three millimeters, maybe. Three millimeters, or, I, I think it's three millimeters. Well, to, to make, make it through it. the catheter. Yeah. 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 And they're little urethras. <laughs> so it's very specific. You can't mm-hmm. just do it for everyone, Mm-mm. unfortunately. Mm-mm. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll go next. Very cool. You want to go next? Okay. So I may be repeating this case, but no one listened to our podcast in the early days. So <laughs> sorry for all those true, <laughs> true. OGs. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to you guys. But for my case, it was a puppy. I I think it's 12 weeks. It's been a while now. But um. <laughs> That was freaky weird. That was freaky weird. Harrison, it's the light just turned off. Harrison, Harrison spooky light, season. Harrison, Almost. fix our setting. Our studio. Come on, <laughs> studio director. Guys, right. I work in these conditions. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the lighting is off. <laughs> um, okay, so, making me look old without the lighting. <laughs> He's like, now nah, you're already like. Oh. It's not as hot though, so it's yeah, right. true. It's okay. fine. <laughs> Sidetracked. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think he was. Ish. I think he was twelve weeks. Well, I feel like. I mean, he was young. Yeah. So, and he was a golden retriever-ish. Yeah. Golden retriever, golden doodle. Yep. Yeah. So he came in because the complaint was that he had drainage on his abdomen. Um. So, honestly, just basic from basic exam, what I could tell is that his by his belly button. So dogs have belly buttons. Um, they're not prominent really, but you can see it if you move the fur and stuff. Um, but. At that spot, though, it was draining, and the smell of the discharge smelled a lot like urine. And honestly, when that happens in a puppy, there's kind of one of very few options. And the main one is something called a patent urachis. So what happens in the womb when the puppy's developing is the, the way they'll they'll pee from the bladder, and it'll go out into their, the sac, essentially mm-hmm. lining them. And so that that channel is supposed to close um, during just or right after birth or something like that. I don't remember the timeline, but nonetheless, it's not supposed to be there after the puppy is born outside in the earth. So (laughs) um, when it's left open, essentially this channel is present from the bladder and it's at the top of the bladder that goes all the way up and still connects out the umbilical cord. The umbilicus, I guess, is what we call it. So instead of it being like a flat skin you don't really ever notice it on a puppy. Now all of a sudden you have a little opening that can actively be draining. They can piddle from it. Um, it can get infected there. So um, essentially that's what it was, a patent urachis. We did not unfortunately get the opportunity to do the diagnostic confirmatory test. We were going to um, surgically correct it because the good news is it can be corrected and they can go on living happy lives. You essentially close that channel. Yep. Um, but due to financial reasons, um, the owner decided to go elsewhere. So I unfortunately don't know how the surgery ended up going, um, which was a bummer because it was a really cool case. But he was honestly, he was willing to do it. He was very awesome, very awesome, very awesome, <laughs> very nice <laughs> owner. He was awesome. Um, just financial constraints. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a cool case because you don't see that very often. No, no. It's like one of those things where I'm like, okay, uh, well, <laughs> they taught me about this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you do surgically? Do you just like suture the, I don't know. So you have to, um, I think we have to do like basically a cystogram. So we put air, air Double contrast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember which one into the bladder. So then on x-ray it lights up so you can see the channel and then you essentially tie it just off. Just tie it off. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Pretty ba- It's a pretty simple surgery. It's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. So it was interesting. That's cool. Cool stuff. Yeah. 
Very cool. So I think when we do spays, because that's the surgery we most often are in a young animal or opening up their abdomen, you can see the fibrin, the recess, yeah. the recess. Where the, oh my God, off. I can't talk. It's Recessed. Like, yeah, patent urecus that's mm-hmm. like just a. Because it turns a into a ligament. Fibrin. Yeah, it ligament that attaches the, to the. The lateral ligament of the bladder? Because there's two of them or one of them. No, I can't remember what or it's the, called top one dorsal yeah. ligament yeah it's, i think it's a dorsal ligament yeah. in the bladder and so it's just right there and sometimes you have to break <laughs> it down different yeah, yeah. so i know uh, it's kind of cool yeah can you imagine picking up your puppy from wherever you got your puppy from and you go by for like a week and you're like oh it's so cute and then it's like honey is his belly button leaking pee he is really talented <laughs> <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> Good shot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. My case is a um, presented. It's a, a – oh, my gosh. I can't talk tonight. It's a eight-year-old female spade, Scotty, that presented for increased thirst, increased urination, diarrhea, and vomiting. It was just a wow. humdinger of a case. <laughs> it was a humdinger. <laughs> it was a humdinger of a case. Um, and so um, it originally was worked up um, and had labs run. And on the lab panel, we found hypoalbuminemia, hypoglobulinemia, slightly low normal calcium, um, low normal BUN. What else am I missing? I think that's it. It's CBC was normal. Um, at that time, the veterinarian treated for, um, and then we also ran a urinalysis, which showed a urine specific gravity of 1006. Mm. And so, low urine specific gravity. Um, I think that there was, oh boy, I can't remember what the UPC was because of the urine was run in house originally. Um, And so I think initially some things were just addressed um, empirically. So the dog was treated for GI symptoms and then um, potential urinary tract infection and the pet wasn't improving. And so then we dug a little bit deeper into why the dog had the low protein values. And so um, they, with the lack of improvement, so they, we started the dog on like uh low, I know actually the dog was started on metronidazole and ZD. Mm. And didn't improve. Yeah, maybe like briefly improved, but mm-hmm. then it's kind of one of those cases where it's like four, six weeks later, it's like, oh no, they come yeah, back in like because the problems the either hasn't resolved or it's back or whatnot. But this dog kept showing up um, with um, increased thirst and increased urination, which was kind of odd. It just didn't fit the, the scenario mm-hmm. or whatnot. And so we just you know, basically hammered away at the low proteins and talked to them about protein losing enteropathy. And um, the proteins were low enough that we really, because what we really needed to do was biopsy the gut, but the proteins were low enough that it wouldn't have been prudent to do that because of healing. So we empirically treated the dog for um, lymphangiectasia, which is like basically inflammation of the lacteals of the GI tract, which creates an inflammatory condition so then you're not absorbing absorbing. anything yeah yeah so um the clue on the lab work was really the the low normal calcium the low cholesterol the low normal bun the low albumin and the low globulin because usually with gi disease you're gonna the globulins are going to be low as well yeah as the albumin we tested her for addison's disease and we tested her for a bunch of other things did you look at the liver because that like screams liver Mm-hmm. cirrhosis or something to me yeah but, okay yep we did how mm-hmm. old did you say the dog was she was like eight hmm. eight something like that and yeah uh scotty scotty. Oh, scotty so we ended up treating her with um atopica and prednisone and then and vitamin b because we figured her yeah levels are going to be low anyway and um then just tracked her proteins over time um I think she fooled the person working her up because of the increased thirst, increased urination. So the thought was, oh, she's got to have a UTI. Oh, she's got to have a UTI. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's got to have, we need to culture a urine. Oh, wait, she's got a UTI. We need to culture a urine. And actually it was the GI disease that was driving all the changes in water consumption and urination. Yeah. So once I we controlled the underlying GI disease, then all those symptoms went away as well. Yeah. So it was a really cool case because yeah. a lot of times 
we don't see that secondary effect with the increased thirst, increased urination. Did I ever get the albumin get low enough to where it was scary? Um, it was like 1.7. Okay. So. Not too, too bad. Yeah. You know, but still, I don't Probably like that. Probably would have gotten low. there at some point. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like that's like I think the albumin was like one point eight, and the the no, the albumin was one point seven, and the globulins was like one point eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, it was like oh, yeah, low. I don't like it that low. Yeah, no, no fun. <laughs> albumin needs because you need time, <laughs> like to get the pet back to normal. Because you, you know, so it's like you start your medication. And I think we started with just pred- prednisone just to see if I could get yeah. her normal with prednisone and I couldn't. So I had to add atopica and then she went right to normal. Yeah. But she is maintained on atopica. I was able to get her off the prednisone and she's maintained nice. on atopica. Actually, I have a case. I'll do it next time. That reminds me. Next week. Something similar. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think also for all those people out there listening, if you're using um, trade atopica think about using cycle advance because it's generic and it's much cheaper it's almond flavored i think mm-hmm. too so it's not so, as bitter but so yeah that's just a little tidbit it's only liquid though right yep. so if you have a big dog it yeah it's only liquid it'd be a lot of liquid <laughs> yeah i mean i guess that's true too yeah but they come in bigger bottle sizes so and nice. it's like so much less expensive than yeah. atopica yeah so should we tell everyone that we have that <laughs> oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Can I tell them? <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be the one to break the news that we have another podcast next Friday, right? Next Tuesday. Well, it comes Are out on Friday. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah, they don't know what day we record on. Do they? It's Tuesday. We record on Tuesdays. Tuesdays so at know. dinner time. <laughs> I know we're I know, starving. I'm like pulling back yawns. Comes out the yeah. next Friday. We're all starving. So, Friday. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Little back scene action. <laughs> That's right. Behind the scenes. <laughs> Behind the scenes. It could be a, a Devin fortune, um, like little. Fortune? Fortune telling? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. A little behind the scenes with Devin fortune. <laughs> Next week? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Whatever you want. Oh, okay. uh, gosh. So anyway, the dog's <laughs> yeah, the dog's doing great. Protein's great. normal. Weight's normal. Lovely. No increase thirst, no increase Way to thirst. go, Idaho. Agnes is still with us. Yay, Agnes. Agnes. I love her Agnes. name. Go, Agnes. <laughs> she's such so a, she's got such a great name. And yeah, yeah her owners are great. And love it. Yeah. Very cool. It's a name so. you would use. I would. You Phyllis. Would. Agnes. Frank. <laughs> Agnes. I love it. Walter. Okay, let's do our questions. Yes, ma'am. Are we ready? Yes. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm a new fan of the show TikTok. You guys are absolutely awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Taylor. I have always had German Shepherds growing up, a couple of Shih Tzus, but now a Pomsky owner. I never did realize those husky stereotypes aren't too far off. What's your opin- opinion on these breeds? Thanks. Taylor Stafford. Go from German Shepherds to Shih Tzus <laughs> to, to Pomskis. <laughs> it's like in between. <laughs> Depending on the genetics, I guess. Oh, yeah. gosh. Okay. start. Should we start with like one breed and I'll give our opinion there? I think she's asking oh, about the mix. I think she's asking these, about the that's what I thought. Siberian Husky mixed breeds or the Pom- Pomeranian I mixed breeds. I understand it as the Pomsky. I mean, yeah. Pomeranians are used with other breeds to bring down the size of the mm-hmm. dog. Yeah. So, like the Australian, like Holden's Australian Shepherd. Not they didn't with that dog, but that's a oh, breed I didn't that, know they'll, that they'll use that. They'll use a Pomeranian with an Australian Shepherd to bring it down to a miniature size. Oh, to just okay. make a mini Aussie. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's what they're bred a with? Pomsky is just a over mini time husky. Yeah, I mean, like what they do is they. I mean, I think it's not like F one F one, but like right. they're further down the line or whatever. But yeah. that's how they decrease oh gosh, the size. It could be like a posse. <laughs> oh, a posse. Yes. Like a mom yeah. and a Nazi. So, I mean, I That'd don't know. Cute. I Mixed breed dogs, I don't really necessarily have an issue with mixed breed dogs. Mm-mm. I, I mean, think it just depends on the two temperaments of the breeds you're yeah. looking for. Like, does the stereotypes like of a husky <laughs> fit your lifestyle? So we said we were going to talk about stereotypes. <laughs> Which there are there are stereotypes for a reason. Yeah. 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 I don't and understand why everyone gets mad about stereotypes. But anyway, they are there and there's for a reason. some for like every breed. Yes. Like it's not mm-hmm. like it's. Oh, you is... yes. If I name a breed, you would have exactly. something you would say about it. Yeah. Because yeah. there's several of them or 
you see several of them that are that way. Right. It's, yeah. yeah. So it's just the way it goes. There's always one that isn't. And you're like, I could have one of those. Yeah. And yours would not be like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's always the way it goes, I feel like. Yeah. Like yeah. I feel like yep. I'm lucky. Yeah. Yep, it just takes exactly. one to change your mind. But So husky stereotypes. Dramatic. Yep. Yeah, drama queens for sure. Yes. Kings and queens. Just love to listen to themselves talk. Yep. Yep. They're very talky. <laughs> they, they're very talky. A lot of them will fall over on their back when you look at them. Yeah. They yeah. just fall over and they're like, oh, I just, it's or like the, horrible. It's like the worst thing ever. I think they're kind of skeptical. Um, skeptical. Yeah, like, crazy eyes. Yeah. Sure. Apprehensive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially in this environment, I feel like I don't have many huskies that come in. They're like, like a lab. Super you know, excited just, to be here. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 I think they're loyal to their to their families. Yeah, mm-hmm. they like they need a job. Yep, for sure. Or else they're gonna be crazy huskies and mm-hmm. yeah. not a good apartment dog. Even mm-hmm. though they're small, can I help you? <laughs> he really like, wants all the stuff. He does. Yes, he does. Stereotypes of King Charles. <laughs> King Charles stereotypes. Sweet, oh curious, <laughs> bigger than you, bud. <laughs> So, uh, okay, yeah. so what about poms? Pom poms. What's some stereotypes of those? Pomeranians. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like yeah. we have a lot of mean ones come in here. But I have a Pomeranian yeah. at home and she's amazing. She's yeah, I like sweet. Pomeranians. I, I don't really that. have an issue with Pomeranians. I think they're I, so cute. Yeah, I they're mean, I feel like cute. Yeah. yeah, they're really nice. And I cute definitely and... have a couple that's like, uh, yeah. yeah, they don't like it here. Mm-hmm. But like, I think the majority of the palm patients I have are super sweet, actually. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're just cuddly. They're like little teddy bears. Yeah. They're so cute. They're so they don't look real. They're so cute. Mm-hmm. They're, they look like that pillow. Yeah. <laughs> they when they're like puppies, pillow. they're just like, <laughs> they don't even, yeah, they don't look real. They don't they, look real. They look fake. We should have had Mitzi yeah. as a oh, surprise yeah. guest. Okay. I will say their teeth usually, I always say like yeah. by the end of their mm-hmm. life or towards the end, they're probably not going to have any teeth mm, left. They like, shouldn't have They any shouldn't teeth have left. any yeah. teeth left. Yeah. yeah. And they like to bark. They are barkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, as far Annoying as mixing two breeds that really like to talk. Yeah. You're kind of playing true. with fire if you yeah. live in like an apartment or something. You <laughs> yeah. might get some noise complaints. That's Stereotypically. Yeah. Not in every case. But just like any dog, you try to train them. and mm-hmm. But they're still going to have those natural innate instincts. So mm-hmm. it's just. I would love to see what a Pomeranian Husky looks like. Have you never seen one? A uh-uh. Pomsky? That's not popular here. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. I, I think, think I've had one here. And you can. I don't know. It just looks like a short, stocky husky. I think I've just seen them at pet stores. Sounds cute. It's they're cute. Sounds yeah. really cute. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Thank you, Taylor. Second Excellent. question. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about seizures and pets? I have a diabetic cat who sometimes has hypoglycemic seizures, but is hard to find. But it's hard to find info on what they look like and how to support your pet during and after the seizure. At Depressed Capricorn 69. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't read that. <laughs> That's kind of sad, but we're going to give you some information yeah. to make you yeah. happy. That's right. Because. Be a happy Capricorn. Yes. <laughs> happy okay. Capricorn. Um, That's a so, big question. That's a lot a of lot. info to unpack in that question. So maybe we focus on the diabetic seizures. Yes, I think that's a great idea because okay. seizures and pets is like a very broad, which we certainly Incredible. can talk about at some point. But right. I think is a very broad topic. That's a lot of info. And we, people only listen to us for so long. So, exactly. Right? <laughs> what okay. time is it? Okay. All right. So the, let's start with the first part. Sometimes it has hypoglycemic seizures. Yes. I would say that. Which means. That's probably. Low blood sugar. Yes. Yes. Low blood sugar. Yes. You have a seizure. Yep. And that shouldn't be happening frequently. Mm-mm. No. So there's something up with that. Cats are known for being transient diabetics. So it is possible that your cat is going in and out of a diabetic state, possibly. Maybe it's not really diabetic. Maybe it's, and you're still using insulin. I did at the conference I went to, though, I went to a talk for diabetic cats. And it basically was like after three months of starting insulin oh, treatment, yeah. you're it's probably not going not to get remission. into remission. Yeah. yeah. So if it's been going on that and don't long, you Are they still saying you need to use Glargine? Yeah, to get Glargine. them into rem- I mean, to to attempt to get yeah. them into. Yeah. yeah. That was the still favorite one. She mentioned a couple others, but none that I've used. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that you need to look at the diet, the cat's insulin dose and the glucose curve. You know, you For have sure. to More see. Curves. Yeah, like if they're dropping low enough to have seizures, that's pretty low. Right, low sixty. So if you have an acuplex at home, no. 
AccuCheck <laughs> at home. That would be a good way to check yes. it. If your cat's having lots of these episodes, then using the Libre. Oh, oh Libre. Libre. Yes. That's like all they recommend. Would be a right great now. tool because yeah. you can put it on your cat and then mm-hmm. leave it there and it can give you glucose readings throughout the day. Yeah. It's like an it's app. It's over two weeks yeah. and there's an app yeah. you can put on your phone or they make readers for the yeah. Libre too. But Libre is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I think that that gives you a better like global picture of what the pet's doing. Yeah. As far as clinical signs or what is it, what is a hypo, what does a hypoglycemic event look like in a cat? What do you think? Do you guys know? Like a drunken stupor, mm-hmm. like stumbling around. Um, yeah. I like that's like the most classic. Like if you look at them and you can just tell like, oh, I mean, not, not eating, you feel unconscious, like, yeah. yeah, not eating. Yeah. Just, I mean, I, I guess if it's the point of seizing, I would feel like yeah. you would see some signs getting up, leading up to that point. I guess if you have but, a lethargic, like lazy cat and you can't see the behavior set true, in before sure. it gets mm-hmm. too low, that could be yeah. more complicated. And like cats, a lot of cats are grazers. So it's like, okay, is it like, when is it eating and mm-hmm. compared to when you're giving the insulin? Is it actually the right dose, but it doesn't have enough food or sugar that to reap? Yeah. There's so many instances that just has to get cross-checked in this situation i think well and i think her other question is like what what do the seizures look like Mm. it's hard to find info on what they look like so i mean i think we could see anything in a cat i mean it could be anything from like staring Mm -hmm. and so then hiding hiding gosh Mm-hmm. Head bob, head, like head tremors, yeah. possibly Stagmus. falling Randy? over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, falling like over. Like actual grandma. Like I, we just don't seizures in cats aren't a thing. Yeah. So like, I mean, okay, they can be. I mean, like <laughs> they're really not. It's not like dogs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do not see seizure cases like we do in dogs with cats. Right. So um, it would look very unusual. I mean, I think you would be able to tell that something's going on with your cat as far as mm-hmm. specific details. I think, I think the things that you guys mentioned things, are really like, the main things to be watching right. for. Yeah. yeah. And it's tricky because the other thing that you have to remember is what they can have a Samoji event. So when an animal drops really low on their glucose levels, and I've had this happen, unfortunately with a diabetic cat, but the body is going to try to rebound and spike a whole bunch of glucose to essentially save the system. Mm-hmm. So if we did a curve, you know, they'll start high, they'll go down, they'll go really down too low. And then their body's like, Oh crap, I need to go in survival mode. Mm-hmm. So they'll spit out a whole bunch of essentially increase that glucose level Mm -hmm. so then when we're trying to catch it like i remember i had the hardest time trying to catch it on my patient because it was happening at nighttime and we didn't have the libre on yet so um that's another great reason for using the libre so if these events are happening when the owner is not around or it's at nighttime or something like yeah you got to catch it somehow and well it's almost impossible to do like a 24-hour curve right no you know so i mean it's not realistic yeah the cat's not gonna late or the dog isn't gonna i mean the dog might but Yeah. yeah it's just not you don't want to poke your cat that many times either. So mm-hmm. how do you go about supporting your pet during and after the seizure? Protect them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mean, from sharp objects and like falling stairs. downstairs. Yeah. Or, Walls, yeah. For sure. Furniture. They will not swallow their tongue. Do not put your hands in their <laughs> mouth. Far do not get in their mouth. You do not need yeah. to do that. Um, and I know um, in smaller animals, you can like, if easily accessible, wrap them in like a, a blanket or a Swallow. towel. I think that's more common with dogs though. When dogs are like Flailing having a grand around. mall, like thrashing and laying down. I don't know. The way yeah, cats present, you just want to be careful helpful. with mm-hmm. the re- like if they're reactive seizing, mm-hmm. like you don't want to get scratched. Mm-hmm. You don't get right. But I mean, caro syrup. So adding any, any type of, I mean, caro syrup is the best because it's the highest, a high concentration of sugar mm-hmm. glucose so you just get a little bit you don't even need a lot and put it on their gums and it's better to do that in my opinion than not do anything at all and yeah. just let them write out that seizure because if their sugar spikes who cares they're on insulin so yeah. you're going to bring it back down for mm-hmm. one instance but you've got to apply you have to have caro syrup if you have a diabetic patient and you have mm-hmm. to have enough sugar to get La- outlast the duration of the insulin mm-hmm. so then that gives you some time to get to your veterinarian yeah mm-hmm. they can then give put an IV in give it IV dextrose or whatnot yeah. and then that way you can last out the insulin because yeah. 
once the sugar goes away or gets used, then the seizure's Back gonna happen down. again. Yep. Yeah. So And even if you're on your way to the vet, put carrot syrup yep. on the gums in the mouth. Well, on the gums. Don't stick your finger in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> the diabetic first aid kit. Yes. Carrot syrup. Yep. For sure. Exactly. Do you see hyperglycemia often? Well, Unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's when the opposite effect. So, well, I guess not opposite. It's still unregulated diabetes. Mm-hmm. But there can be other disease processes that also affect insulin and how it works. So, say you have a controlled diabetic and all of a sudden it's not, you know, it's showing more signs, peeing. Mm-hmm peeing more, drinking more, the curve's out of whack. Well, if it's been consistency, consistently controlled, then you have to start looking like, okay, does it have like a urinary tract infection? Dental disease, like stuff like that mm-hmm. can create insulin resistance. So, yep, yeah, I would say, thankfully, at least in my experience, I've seen more hyperglycemia oh, yeah. get them back under control than the hypo, which is a good thing. Yeah. So. Exactly. Good stuff. We'll keep you on Let's your see. toes, Did those we diabetics. answer all those questions and after the seizures, yeah. Okay. But I would say, yeah, if you have a pet you are treating with insulin and it's having repeated episodes of hypoglycemia, there's something that's not yeah. right. Yeah. So make sure you check in with your veterinarian and get that regulated so that you don't have those episodes. Absolutely. Thank you. Great questions. Yep. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Okay. Outro. I'm not going to do this without memorizing. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Remember, send in those questions and be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at All Star Veterinary Clinic. If you enjoyed this episode or a previous episode, leave us a review on your podcast provider of choice. We'll see you in a few weeks for the next episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Roundtable. Thank Yay! you. Bye.